Okay, let's have a look at uh, 7.5. So we're going to have a look at 7.4 because I need to review something that I said answering this question, which was where we expect the maximum shear and stress to occur. And I was thinking in terms of cross sections of um, just like solid blocks or maybe I beams. Or maybe, uh, I don't know, some kind of uh, square or C channel. And in this case, yes, it's true that we would expect the maximum shear and stress to be occurring in the neutral axis, which we typically will be in the middle of the section. Um, now, let's not forget that uh, the shear and stress here is. Um, going to uh, uh, be dependent upon whatever the cross-sectional area is um, taken sort of uh, parallel to um, to uh, the direction of the uh, the flow stress so Provided you have a shape like this, which you would normally have in, in structures, then that rule is going to work. However, when we move on to <coughs> 7.5, Arnold gives us this uh, googly here, where we've got a big fat section in the middle, and we've got these kind of uh, two channels top and bottom you could imagine you might have a girder device like this if you had cabling or something like that in these sections so in this particular case the maximum shear and stress i wouldn't expect it to be occurring in the middle even though it's going to give me where i expect the maximum shear flow to occur I would expect the maximum shear stress to be occurring here because the uh, shearing stress is equal to the load that we're applying times by the first moment of area and divided by the I, so that's staying a constant. So the V and the I are constant terms and we could call that B or T. So in this case, if I take the cut, they're looking for the shear and stress at A, the B value is going to be all of this length. Whereas if I take the cut to be at B, then the um, length that we're going to use for B will be these two sections. So although... Um, my Q is going to be a little bit less um, here. I'm expecting a lower Q here than the value of Q here. I've got a big change in terms of my B value. And I don't need to do any calculations really to prove it, but I can, I can just see I would expect that uh, the uh, uh, maximum shear and stress would be at that location. Um, I suppose you could do a proof of that. So you could you could say what is QA compared to QB. So you could work them out if you wanted to, and look at the ratios of. QB divided by B and QA divided by B. Should we do that? Pointless exercise, might as well, just to help us show how to calculate QA and QB for those two sections. So let's work out what QB is, first of all. So QB, remember, is going to be the sum of the areas times by the centroids locations. So for B, we've got the, the 
Neutraxis in the middle here. We've got, I'm going to do it, cut up my sections so that I've got a long bit here, which is going to be a mirror image of this. So the distance from here to here, here to the centroid is going to be what, where you got a distance of 30. And this section here is 40, half of that will be 20. So 30 plus 20 gives me 50. Now what about the centroid to this sort of top section? You got a 30 plus 40 plus 5. Yeah, so when we half the 5, that, half the 10, we get 5. So that's 75 to get to here. Okay, so we can work out what QB is. Uh, so that would be 20, uh, so its width is 20, its height is 40, and you got 50 there. And uh, we use the fact we've got a mirror image of them, so we're going to have 2 times that by 2. And then for the top section again, we're going to have 2 of them. Its width is 50, depth is 10, and its centroid is 75. So QB is going to have the value 2 times 20 times 40 times 50 plus 2 times 50 times 10 times 75. So that gives me 155 times 10 to the 3 um, millimetres to the power 3. So that's the QB term. Now let's work out what QA is. I did QB first because QA is going to uh, be the, have the, have, uh, it's going to be this section here. plus all the QA stuff. So all I have to do is work out what this lower section is. And that's going to be what? We've got a width of 120, depth of 30. Its distance to the centroid for that is will be 15. And we can plus on the QB stuff. So 120 times 30 times 15 plus 155 times 3 gives me 209 times 10 to the 3 millimeters to the power 3. And what I'm interested in is what's Q divided by B? B for these two particular sections. So QB divided by B, what's that? So we need to measure, and I will do this in green. We need to measure this bit and this bit. So that's if we're trying to pull away the top QB section. And that's giving me 20 plus 20. So we are going to have 155 times 10 to the 3 <coughs> divided by 40, two 20s. And that's going to give me, what, 155 times 10 to the 3 divided by 40 millimeters gives you 3875 millimeters squared. And now let's look at the term QA divided by QB. So you've got 209 times 10 to the 3 divided by, and 
when we try to do the A section, we will be cutting all the way through this thing. So that is a 120. That's about 120. And we should get a lower number. So 209 times 10 to the 3 divided by 120 gives me 1741. Uh, we'll round this up to 0.7 millimetres squared. So you can see that the shear in stress at B is going to be greater than the one that's closer to the neutral axis. And that's not normally the case. We wouldn't normally expect that to happen. So uh, remember, because V and I are both constants in terms of this cross-section. OK, so that proves that uh, we would expect the maximum shear, therefore, to occur here. And we're told what that maximum value is. We're told that it's 75 megapascals. So let's use that. So we've got the shear stress at B is V over I times Q over BB. And we know that that is 75 megapascals. Um, what am I being asked to find? I think, yeah, so I'm only being asked to find, determine the shearing stress, so I know I've found point B already, so I've done it. So will we use the argument or just make the assumption? It's up to you, but uh, we've actually kind of proved that we know that the maximum shearing stress is going to be at B, and it's going to therefore have a value of 75 megapascals. So now using this as our starting point, we can now go on and find what the stress is going to be for A. <coughs> VI QA over BA. Or do we? Uh, yeah, we do because um, I can divide. I can divide this equation one by this equation two and get rid of the vi terms, so I don't have to bother calculating them. So stress over b is going to give me q a b a divided by QB over BB. So bring up the stress B value. And you can see that we just got a ratio of terms here. QA, QA over BA divided by QB over BB times by the stress at B. So what's that? 
1742 divided by 3875 times by 75. So although this was kind of a, I felt at first a pointless exercise, finding these values, it uh, does come in useful later on in the, the calcs to work out the other stress values. So that divided by 3875 times by 75. And I get Thirty three point seven one megapascals. Okay, yes, yeah, so that agrees with Arnold. Um and now let's look at C. Okay, so this is a bit tricky. We're gonna imagine shearing this section away from the main body. Uh, so let's work out what that Q is. We're going to do that, do that here. So its width is going to be 30. Its height is going to be 10, and its centroid is going to be the same as the other section, 75. Thirty times 10 times 75. So that gives me two, two, 22.5 times 10 to the 3. Uh, and this will be in millimetres to the power three. Okay, so that's the QC. And the section that's in contact that you're trying to shear it away is going to be that section there. So QC divided by BC equals... 22.5 times 10 to the 3 divided by 10. So, 2.25 times 10 to the 3 millimeters squared. So we're going to do the same thing as we did above. QC divided by BC, QB divided by BB times by the shear at B, and what does that give me? So 2.25 times 10 to the power of 3 divided by by this term here, 3875 gives me a ratio of uh, 0.58, which I then times by 75, and then that gives me an answer of 43.5. And we're working in megapascals. Okay, so yeah, that, that's, uh, that's what Arlo gets as well. Okay, so that's, um, that's that was a clever question for Arlo put in to um, make me remember that uh, the maximum shear and stress isn't necessarily always going to be at the centre. Uh, and here's a good example of a type of girder which will break that rule.